Oh, hey, everybody. As promised, this is Paul. I told you tonight we would do a, a video, and a lot of you would find it disturbing. Um, I'm sticking to that because uh, this is very difficult to do my channel. And the reason being, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the reason being is because um, what you're hearing and seeing here on this channel is unlike anything you've ever seen elsewhere. And um, it's just as simple as that. Now, the closest <clears throat> I've come to seeing something like this was today. There was a guy who sounded an awful lot like me, uh, but I'm not sure he was uh, as hardcore as I am, or was and am. Now, this video is going to be disturbing to you. The reason being is because I doubt that you people really understand where we are in the state of the world right now and the state of the United States right now. I don't know if you understand um, how serious a state that we are in. And what I'm going to try to do right now is I'm going to try to make you understand and my subs understand this. Now, I was contacted today uh, just by a, um, I had left a message, not a message, but I left something on somebody's thread. Uh, I think uh, News World, I forgot the name of it, but it's the secondary uh, channel of Mr. Dice. And uh, Mr. Dice, um, I like the man. He's a Canadian and I like him. But unfortunately, like every other Canadian, they're Dumbos. And I'm sorry to say that, but that's about the size of it. Now, I told him, uh, I just sent off the message. I can show it to you if you want. I told him that he's a hero. And uh, he is getting strikes on his channel uh, for showing <clears throat> things uh, that you're not going to see about this thing between Putin and uh, Toot from uh, Ukraine. And um, he's putting up things that <clears throat> they just don't want you to know, folks. And my last channel had two strikes on it. I tried to save it. And all I did was put up um, some uh, troops coming out of a factory in uh, that area and unfortunately um, I had showed uh, these people coming out with a great deal of tattoos all over their body that were very reminiscent of a time in 1940 <clears throat> in Germany during the Second World War and on top of that <clears throat> the other dirty little secret was that, believe it or not, uh, much like FARC, which you don't know what FARC is, unless you're a Latino, you might know what FARC is, but the FARC is the uh, People's Revolutionary Army um, in Colombia, I believe, Colombia. And um, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, they're rebels. And um, they have a tremendous <clears throat> amount of power. I haven't checked them recently. I'm going... This is going back about 15 years or so, uh, maybe 20. And uh, believe it or not, it is not just men in FARC, which is F-A-R-C. And um, FARC is so big that they have a tremendous amount of clout as a rebel organization, a, a paramilitary organization, the way I would subscribe, uh, describe it. And a lot of people don't know that there are, I think they said it was 40% of them are women. And it's hard to believe, isn't it? And unfortunately, <clears throat> what I showed 
was the truth. And I put down that there were women coming out also that were involved with the, uh, and I can't even say the name. Now, folks, I don't expect you to understand like I understand because I'm more of a God and I walk more like a God than a lot of you. And that is because I knew what to throw away and I knew what to keep. And that means World War II was one of the most important things you could ever study in your life because it dealt with so many things that would continue to be relevant throughout time. And <clears throat> that's why it's a really good idea to have more than a thumbnail sketch of World War II because it taught us so much. And indeed, um, they, the United States has done much with <clears throat> picking apart and looking at the Roman Empire because it is the one country that the United States has looked at more than any other uh, country in history uh, because it was so successful and uh, it was not a perfect society by any means. <clears throat> so they, um, they do look at it quite frequently to see where they made their mistakes, essentially because Rome went on for hundreds of years, uh, more than 500 years, essentially. Um, uh, we won't get into it. And what we have here right now is we have a possibility of something happening and I wanna bring it out to you. Now, this is by no means uh, an assurance that it will happen but we need to cover it. Why? Because when you come here, you walk with God. Yeah, you think I'm kidding you. I'm not. Folks, there is no other channel that is going to bring you the kind of information that I will. And I know what I speak of. Now, <clears throat> I have to go over facts and figures with you, which I do not like to do, but is necessary in this situation. And I will try not to get too deep into this. Um, I told you that this would disturb a lot of you. Uh, it will, uh, because a lot of you are gonna have relations, you're gonna have family members, and it's gonna be very difficult for you to process. And you're not the first ones to process it, as you're gonna find out now. We are gonna talk about this, you understand? <clears throat> and things that went along with this. And <clears throat> I'm having a great deal of problems with this. Why? Because I know things that you people don't know. And you should know them, but you don't. And it shouldn't make me a god, but because the masses are so uh, stupid and ignorant right now and trusting and willing to do what people tell them to do that they hold in high regard, then you're forcing me to be a god. I know that doesn't make any sense to you people, but I firmly believe it. And I know that that comes as a big shock to a lot of you. Now, I am going to tell you something that's going to get you angry, and I'll tell you right now. Folks, during this and uh, scam life, we had numerous things. This does not go out to the animals of China. And I'm not talking about animals, I'm talking about the animals. I'm talking about what you consider to be people and I don't consider them to be people at all. To me, they're just animals. I don't even want them worshiping me. I don't want them to worship me. They do not qualify as human beings. So therefore they can't worship me. Um, if you're a human being, 
then I would, of course, invite you to worship me as a god or your personal savior. Either one is okay with me. Now, why do I say that? I say that to agitate you because it's the only thing that will wake you dummies up. My subs now are excluded from this. Now, Americans, this goes out to you. You had forefathers who fought and died to try to keep you free. Oh, here he goes with the, the thing. He doesn't know how dangerous it was and how they needed to do something. Yes, I do. I do know. At least I think I know. And I wonder if you know. And um, like I told you, it was so bad that every day, I, uh, when I get up in the morning, I'd go to the car and then I'd turn on the car and drive away. I ran over three or four dead people uh, during the scam because they were dead. So I, I wound up running over a lot of people. I, I got, I, in the beginning, I used to take the people and I used to weep and then I would push them off to the side of the road and I would say sorry to them. But after a while, I just got to the point where I just ran them over. In fact, sometimes I just put it in reverse and I ran them, ran them over twice. They were dead anyway. See, you people don't get the huck, do you? You just want to make fun of me. Well, you better take a look in the mirror, folks. <clears throat> Your ancestors, I don't want to say that too deeply because it's just your forefathers here in the United States, many of you, not all of you, fought to keep your government at bay. That's what that was all about. There were two main reasons why uh, our Minutemen and the Minutemen were the, the men that fought for us at a minute's notice because uh, the lobsters were coming to get us. And the lobster backs were the British who uh, looked after us when we were in the colonies here of the United States um, in, uh, in the 1700s. And we wanted to be free. We were here for a couple hundred years already. And uh, we really didn't want to be told what to do by the British. We were already becoming different. Why? Because a lot of people don't know that we were made better human beings for the fact that we had Native Americans here. Yes, we took their land, of course. It was not right. But that doesn't change the fact that they're responsible in many ways for us being as prosperous and as intelligent, I hate to say that, as we are. Because the American Indians had a simple grace to them, both in their humor and in their way of looking at life. Um, it's hard to explain, but too difficult to explain. But American Indians are really interesting people. Uh, I'm not going to say all of them are, are uh, angels. Uh, they suffer from high amounts of alcoholism and um, in general, not uh, all of them. And I went to school with them when I was younger. And uh, I was in uh, 11th grade. So I got a grant to go because I'm part uh, Cherokee Indian. And um, this didn't sit well with them because they wanted to see full-blooded Indians uh, get into their programs. And my mom kind of took advantage. And I don't know what to make out of it because I suffered a lot in that arrangement. But in some ways, it gave me a, a real extra dimension, an added dimension uh, because I took so much away from Vermont and uh, what I saw there and what I learned. Um, it wasn't all good. Uh, the alcoholism created um, serious accidents which injured people where we were at and drug abuse was rampant in my opinion. Um, all this kind of stuff which I won't get into and I don't want to bore you folks. We cannot forget about our ancestors and our forefathers who fought for two reasons. They fought the British to keep us off the hands 
of uh, uh, King George. Was it King George? I believe it was King George. We did not want him to dictate anything to us because we had changed already. The British were still stuffy at that time, corrupt, uh, sadistic, um, obnoxious, and the Americans were outgrowing. The colonists were outgrowing the British. That's what happened. British people won't like to hear this, but it's the truth. We can thank our American Indian brothers for this, because that's what did it. Typically, that's what did it. Um, you, could, you could say blacks, too, because uh, blacks were here, too. So in combination of those two, there were no Spanish, really. So it was those two groups of people, and they made us better people. Folks, we have a dilemma on our hands. Uh, to finish this out, the Minutemen fought to keep the king's hands off of us because it got to a point where we weren't allowed to have weapons to even hunt squirrels with because the king didn't allow it. And he didn't want us to have weapons to fight his centuries and his guards. So we won't get any more into that. The other reason, and it's kind of tied into this, is that they wanted um, to make sure that if we had a government, and we established a government, which we did, the founding fathers, many of them who lost everything when they signed the Declaration of Independence and other documents, lost everything because of the government overreach. Now, because most of you people, my subs are excluded, are so dopey and stupid and ignorant, you don't understand what overreach is because they were able to control your behavior through fear and through public obedience daily while the profession which you hold in the highest regard as being the most trustworthy and honest gave you figures and information that we just simply could not, as laymen, we could not uh, double check it or we could not verify it. That's, I'm sorry to tell you folks, but that's the truth. And because they knew the powers that be, whoever that is, or whatever it is, because it could be artificially stimulated, You fell into a state of surrealism and you people are so stupid. Do you want to hear how ignorant and uh, how much of an ignoramus virtually all of you are, my subs excluded? It, 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 you know, it, it would be like me trying to explain to you why it's wrong to throw a baby up in the air and catch it. You, you just don't do it. And if you had somebody that was trying to tell you the reasons why it would be a good thing, you wouldn't even go there. You wouldn't even discuss this or negotiate with it because your basic common sense tells you that that's not a good idea. Now, your fucktard uh, sub-retards virtually all of you, my subs, only 26 of them, excluded. Why? Because they were able to remove your brain material, your brain matter, and make you negotiate stupidity that didn't even need to be discussed. Because it was so surreal that it went beyond science fiction like 1984 and Ray Bradbury and um, all these other people that wrote, all these other authors that wrote uh, dystopian meaning uh, out of place, out of reality, frightening things that do not, that should not be. 
And that's what we turned into. It, we weren't alone. We, we were not alone. Um, stand by one second. I have to uh, put do not disturb. Now, like I said before, you people are so goofy and stupid that if I asked you mindless, stupid sub retards out there, my subs excluded, of course, would you have any thoughts, I mean, one way or another, on throwing babies up in the air for some benefit? Well, I'm going to give you one better than that, okay? I've got an idea. How about we take hundreds of millions of people and force them, force them, not coerce. In the United States, you stupid dildos here in the United States, you were able to be coerced. And I'm sorry about that. I virtually don't feel sorry for any of you anymore because this was a literal call to these. A literal call to this. You understand? A literal call to it. But they had tricked you and they had made you stupid over a period of two and a half years. So you're still fucktards. You don't know one thing from another and you don't know the first thing because they robbed you of your mind. You're walking zombies. But I'm going to ask you walking zombies one thing. Could you think of anything good, anything good, about locking down hundreds of millions of people or certainly um, multiple millions of people by force, putting them under literal lock and key in their flats and homes in China. And I know what you're saying. Most of you are still so brainwashed that you can take that, what I just said, and you can somehow try to rationalize this or try to make it where this had some sort of value. And the sad thing is that you're so dim-witted and stupid that you are going to tell me and others like me that this was done for some noble reason which was going to um, glean us some benefit. What is the benefit, stupid fuck shit retards, sub-retards? What was it? You were going to put... Um, millions upon millions of people under lock and key, at some point it would be dangerous. And certainly if you're locking hundreds of thousands of people down, there are things called fires. There are things called earthquakes. And people died in China from both of them because they were locked in their flats and homes by force. Yet you stupid fuck shit sub retards will still talk to me as if I would even talk to you. I mean, I'm doing it now, but I don't have to be around you to see how stupid and fucked up you are. Are you understanding why they did this? They did this uh, sub retard fuck shit zombies on mm, and I can't say it. But it's um, a word that begins with the letter M. Theory. Do you understand that, folks? Theory. Theory. The theory that if we put people away and warehouse them, that somehow this I won't say it because I'm getting specific here. That somehow this would all go away, huh? That's because you're fuck shit sub retards. 
You don't know that, do you? Well, we are told. Fuck what you were told. You're fucked hard shit fucks. You don't, you don't count. You understand? But because it came from people who they could tell. They have artificial intelligence, folks. They can listen to phone calls. They can listen to the mannerism of people when they get done, when they're told by people in this profession that they trust everything that's being said because they have the highest rate of trust. Folks, you're too dim-witted to even explain this to you. To you. But that's what they were relying on. Now, aside from that, could you think of anything beneficial for your population in locking away millions upon millions of people? Can you fuck shit, sub retards? Tell me anything positive? If you do, you've lost the argument already. Just like I told you about throwing a baby up in the air. There is no reason to do that. The only reason could be is if somebody was shooting at you or something and you were throwing it up like that. That's exactly what it was. Everybody was dying. Hmm, I see. Hmm. Right. Well, now we move on to the next question. Virtually all of you are traitors. My subs excluded. You are traitors to this country. You are traitors to the people who walked before you and fought to keep your posterity, to pass it down to your loved ones so they could have a life at least as good as yours or better. And you didn't you couldn't have possibly cared any less. Your interest was being a zombie and doing as you were told because that profession had the highest rate of trust among all professions which you would gladly believe and follow to the point of being locked in your house forcibly. Now, I will tell you something, folks. I do feel bad for people. Why? Because we had the military. The people lost everything. If they didn't do this, they worked for decades and lost everything that they worked for. And for you fuck shit, re the sub retard fuck shits, you didn't care. You didn't care. And that's what happens when you don't care and you don't care about your fellow man. Nobody's going to wind up caring about you. It's sad, isn't it? And that is what happened. And I will close it with this. What was our last line of defense? Well, you could say teachers. You could say first responders but the real truth is do you know what your last line of defense was for an overreaching government that tried to and did accomplish forcing you into something coercing you to be more precise do you know who your last hope was the boys in blue the police Simple truth, they failed us. They did the same thing in Germany in the 1940s. And they were held responsible. They didn't care that they were following orders. Shame on you, police. You were our last line of defense. And you were either so stupid or so corrupt that you refused to see what was clear at some point of time that this could not possibly be what they were telling us. It wasn't possible, folks. It just wasn't. 
So you let us down. Now, they hanged many of the people who were just following orders in 1945. We had Nuremberg, which was a trial. What are we going to do with you? What are we going to do? Will you do this again? Will you do this again? Well, if we have to start hanging them, I don't know. But I know one thing. If serious penalties are put onto these police officers for what they have done, they shan't do it again. They will think twice about locking away millions of people and anal screenings at airports and all the rest of this garbage. You might not want to believe it. You might want to stand up against the people telling you like they should have done in Germany in 1940s and a little bit before. It's an embarrassment and I am ashamed to be with you mindless zombie retards. And you're going to find out that you are going to believe exactly as I believe in time. Because we're already making the headway to it right now. People who are afraid are not afraid anymore. People who talked left-wing nonsense are now like Jimmy Dore, D-O-R-E. He's starting to come around. But he's a stupid idiot. He still believes in any of this. But he's getting there. Folks, pay attention to what I said. Come to this channel if you can think. And keep an open mind. And certainly I recommend that you worship me as a god. For anyone that's offended by this, 